I recently did a video highlighting the stupidity of a Canadian study showing that unvaccinated people were more likely to be injured in a car crash than vaccinated people. This is the paper in the American Journal of Medicine. I'm not going to repeat all of the many flaws in the study here, but it's important to note that even if you adjust for the misclassification of vaccinated as unvaccinated, there's absolutely nothing surprising about finding a higher rate of injuries amongst the unvaccinated. It's simply because the unvaccinated were banned from public transport in Canada during the period of the study, and so were doing far more driving than the vaccinated. While the study looked at and rejected as explanations multiple potential confounders like age and comorbidities, it somehow avoided this most obvious one. But what I want to do in the short video is show how the kind of data in this study can be used to explain and illustrate a crucial paradox that invalidates many claims from empirical studies. I've produced a few other videos on this paradox, it's called Simpson's Paradox, but it's always useful to find new ways of illustrating it. I'm going to use purely hypothetical numbers here to make the point as clearly as possible. So imagine that we observe 100 vaccinated people and 100 unvaccinated people. Then we simply observe over a period of time how many in each group are injured in car accidents. We observe 4 injured amongst the vaccinated and 8 injured amongst the unvaccinated. So 4% of the vaccinated are injured in car accidents compared to 8% of the unvaccinated injured in car accidents. So we can certainly conclude that the unvaccinated are twice as likely to be injured in car accidents, but this may mean very little at all. Let's look a bit deeper into the data. What we have to do is consider how much driving people do. Now for simplicity, we classify people as either those who drive often and those who drive rarely. So in the vaccinated, only a few, say 10%, drive often. And in the unvaccinated, 70% drive often and 30% don't. Now, obviously, those who drive often are more likely to be involved in a car accident than those who don't. But let's suppose that irrespective of the vaccination status, the rate of injuries is 1 in 10 for those who drive often and 1 in 30 for those who don't. So 1 in 10 there, 1 in 30 there, 1 in 10 there, 1 in 30 there. So in the VAX group, 1 out of the 10 who drive often is injured, and 3 out of the 90 who don't drive often is injured, and in the unvaccinated group, 1 of the 30 who drive rarely are injured, while 7 of the 70 who drive often are injured. So, as we saw before, 4% of the vaccinated are injured, compared to 8% of the unvaccinated. And this confirms that the unvaccinated are twice as likely to be injured. But there's no difference in driving safety between the two groups. But even if the vaccinated are more likely to be in accidents in both the drive often and drive rarely categories, we can still arrive at the illusion that they are genuinely safer drivers. So let's remove these assumptions for the rate of injuries amongst the vaccinated. And instead, Let's assume that 1 in 5 rather than 1 in 10 of those who drive often and 1 in 25 instead of 1 in 30 for those who drive rarely. So now you can see that in both categories the vaccinated have a higher rate of injury than the unvaccinated. But how does that pan out? So 2 of the 10 vaccinated who drive often are injured. And 3 or 4, let's say 4, that's the more likely out of 90, who drive rarely are injured. And for the unvaccinated, nothing changes. It's still got 7 injured amongst those who drive often, and 1 injured amongst those who drive rarely. So we now have 6% of the vaccinated injured, compared to 8% of the unvaccinated injured. So the unvaccinated are still 25% more likely to be injured, even though in both categories the unvaccinated are less likely to be injured. And this is an example of Simpson's paradox. In general, what this means is that when only the aggregated data is considered, group A, in this case the vaccinated, has a lower rate of incidence than group B, the unvaccinated. But when we drill down into each of the subcategories, in this case drive often and drive rarely, group A the vaccinated has a higher rate of incidence than group B, the unvaccinated. And this happens because there's a confounder, in this case the amount of driving, which is hidden in the aggregated data. It's influenced by the group type and also influences the rate of incidence.
And it's best to look at this in the context of a simple causal model. When we're looking at the aggregate data, we're only interested in the difference between the vaccinated in terms of how likely they are to be injured. But that ignores the hidden confounder. The vax status influences how often a person drives, and how often a person drives influences their chances of being injured in an accident. And we use what are so-called conditional probabilities to capture the extent of these causal influences. So for driving, the conditional probabilities are shown here. When vaccinated is false, there's a 70% chance that the person drives often. And when vaccinated is true, there's only a 10% chance that they drive often. And for the injured, we have to consider the probabilities conditioned on both the vaccination status and the amount of driving. Now, in the first scenario of no difference between the vaccinated and the unvaccinated, 1 in 30, that's 3.33%, were injured amongst those who drive rarely, and that's the same in both categories, compared to 10% in those who drive often. But in the second scenario, we had these higher rates in the vaccinated. Remember, it was 1 in 25, that's 4%, and 1 in 5, that's 20%. I can actually show you this running as a so-called Bayesian network. So... Here's the situation where we ignore the confounder. We assume an equal chance of vaccinated and unvaccinated. When we consider the unvaccinated, we're going to run the model. We get our 8% injured. And for the vaccinated, when we run the model, we get our 4%. What we're now going to do is reveal the hidden confounder and look at what happens. So here you can see that when they were vaccinated, you've got the 10% driving often probability compared to when they're not vaccinated. Now, the interesting thing about when we run this as a Bayesian network is that we can do back propagation. If all we know is that a person has been injured, it's going to work out the posterior probability that they're vaccinated and they drive off. And so notice it, there is an increased probability that they were unvaccinated, but there's an equally increased probability that they drive often. If we know, for example, that they're not vaccinated, then we're almost certain they drive often. Now notice that the probability tables defined here are exactly the ones that I showed you in the case where we've got no difference in safety between the drivers. But let's move to the case where we've now got the unsafe model. So here, we look at the probability table here, you can see this is the one where the vaccinated in both of the categories have a higher rate of interest than the unvaccinated. Running this model, we're going to illustrate Simpson's paradox. So if someone's unvaccinated, then there's an 8% chance they're injured. Compared to if they're vaccinated, we get that slightly less than 6% chance. However, in each of the subcategories, we're going to show that reverses. So for the vaccinated who don't drive often, there's a 4% chance that they're injured. Whereas for the unvaccinated who don't drive often, there's a 3.3% chance. So the unvaccinated in the drive often category you can see the lower injury rate than the vaccinated. And conversely, in the drive often category, the unvaccinated are 10%, whereas the vaccinated are 20%. But how can we use a model like this to determine the true difference between vaccinated and unvaccinated with respect to probability of injury? Well, the way we do that is to simply break the link from vaccinated to drive often. And once we break this link and run the model, we can compare the true injury rate of vaccinated and unvaccinated independently of how often they drive. We're effectively creating a simulation of a randomized controlled trial here where they're equally likely to be vaccinated and equally likely to drive often. But we're still using the same conditional probabilities for injured given vaccinated and drive often. And now we can see that if they're unvaccinated, 
probability of being injured is 6.6%, whereas if they're vaccinated, it goes up to 12%. So we've simulated a randomized controlled trial using the observational data by simply cutting that link from vaccinated to drive often.